it's talking, I think today about business owners or people that have a company or an entrepreneur of some sort, they look at this and they're like, how do I invest outside of my business? Most of the time, you know, people that have a business and they're good at running a business, they know that landscape really well, but they might not know maybe some ways that they can save on taxes or, you know, invest in ways that allow the business to continue to grow, but also to put some potential money in their own pocket and employees' pockets. So I want to talk a little bit today to business owners and people who are even thinking about starting a business maybe okay. in the future. So business owners and entrepreneurs. Yeah. And what I heard sneaking between the lines of everything you just said was um, – some people want to invest. A lot of people, the the business is their investment. But what if you could reposition some money out of the IRS's account and back into your own? Yeah, especially. Yeah. I mean, talking about what are some of the benefits of maybe opening a retirement account? We could kind of start there in really generic language and say, is a retirement plan a good idea? And yes. Okay. okay next there we question. Go. <laughs> so um, could you talk to me maybe about some of the choices that are out there for someone who does have their own business and how those work? Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, I feel like just for those listening to kind of help out though a little bit, you know, first consider, you know, maybe you're not a business owner. This probably is still interesting to you in that if you understand how the business made a decision, it may help you as an employee to kind of figure out, like, why are they doing this? Uh, What's in it yeah. for me? I think we should talk about the flip side of this. Yes. If you're the employee and you're being offered this menu to choose from, like, hey, I'm allowed to open this type of retirement account, that so, doesn't necessarily mean you can't open another type of retirement account on your own. Yeah. So again, backdrop for everybody here, because I don't assume that everybody knows what we're talking about yet. Right. The The challenge of living in the financial world is that we do this all the time. And I know you guys listening, not everybody does this all the time. Right. So if you own a business, one of the things that now the state of Oregon pushes this to, right, they're, they're saying we want to help people save. Right. And so they're encouraging businesses to open up or in certain cases, requiring businesses to create retirement plans. Okay. Which is kind of a weird thing. Um, it doesn't mean that the employer has to contribute to them, but it means that the employer is expected to create an environment where they exist. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that's Oregon law, but I don't know what, if you're listening in a different state, it may be different where you're at. But the point is for entrepreneurs, first of all, a lot of the time we're trying to figure out ways to save on taxes. A lot of people don't understand that one of the things a business can do is create a benefit package for its employees, and you're able to expense that from the business. So it can be a retention tool for good employees. So creating benefits is a business expense, but it's also sort of an investment in your employees as an entrepreneur, mm. right? And now if you're the employee, you're like, huh, I guess maybe the boss is trying to keep me around by putting some things in place that are good for employees. Right. right? And, uh, you know, the number one thing that we most often hear about is what? Like an IRA of some sort? I think it's probably health insurance. Oh. Right. I think that's what most people think of yeah. when they think of business benefits. Right. Okay. They think of health insurance and maybe retirement plans. But small businesses in particular oftentimes don't offer health insurance because it is really expensive and doesn't scale particularly well. So, you know, if you have a business that's got a couple hundred employees, there's a lot of revenue running through that business because it's employing a lot of people. But the small mom and pop shop that's got maybe two to 10 employees, that can be very expensive for a small, right. small business. So it's not uncommon for those not to be offered. But it's much more common to see retirement plans offered in small businesses and certainly in bigger businesses. So with that as a backdrop, let me ask you the question, Matt. Mm -hmm. Why might a business owner want, besides the employee retention concept, right. why might they want a retirement plan? I mean, they might want to be able, I mean, say, you know, the owner of the business is getting hammered on taxes, right? They're mm -hmm. just paying a ton. They're, they're, they have a lot of income. They might want to defer some of those taxes in order to not have to pay so much to the government yeah. in a given year. 
Yeah, it's true. Uh, we talk a little bit about taxes on this program, but not a ton. No. Right. Uh, and, and that comes down to the fact that we're not legally tax advisors, but we can still talk about what taxes do and how they operate. Right. Right. Um, taxes are a progressive thing. The more you earn, the higher your income tax goes. Right. OK. So. Essentially, the retirement plan, if you will, is a way to shift money and expense it out of the business and put it into an, some kind of retirement vehicle that defers taxes if, if it's not a Roth, right? If we're talking about like regular retirement accounts, traditional like IRAs, traditional 401k. or a 401k is the really the, the one that we're kind of thinking of, but there's other types of mm -hmm. retirement plans, but they, they, they walk and talk similar to 401ks. Right. The idea is that the business can then expense out and rather than taking the the income and paying taxes on it, you could put that income into a retirement plan and you don't pay the taxes until later. Why is that a big deal? Well, it's a big deal because you're saving for your future self while mm -hmm. also getting a little bit of a tax break today. Yeah, you're saving on the taxes now. That money that's not that didn't go away to taxes can now grow. Right. So mm -hmm. it's part of the investment, too. You're not yeah. having to invest with what's left after the taxes. You get the whole thing before the taxes. And then you get to let that grow over time. And as it grows, you don't pay taxes on the growth. Right. So mm -hmm. you're not experiencing capital gains. You're not paying dividend taxes or any of those things as you're accumulating. When do you pay the tax? In retirement, when you go to pull the money out. Right. And and we assume retirement. It's, yeah, I mean, you but could it's in the future. You pull it early. Yeah, you, right. No. And what happens if you pull it too soon? Well, you, depending on what type of account, you know, most of the time there's a 10% tax penalty. Or uh, more. Or more. Yep. There, there's ways that it can go higher than that. But then you also pay that as income. So right. if you had $70,000 of income for the year, but then you pull 30000 out of that retirement account... Ooh, now you have $100,000 of income for the year and you paid the 10% penalty or higher right. on, the, on 30, the withdrawal. Yeah. So there are some gotchas to it, but the benefit would be, especially if you're working today and you have a bunch of income, right, that you have more money or higher tax rate now and then later on in the future, you expect a lower tax rate. So the lower tax rate in the future is what we're really trying to shift things toward. The, the whole purpose is like, hey, if I'm in a high tax bracket today, but in my, in my retirement, I'm not going to be earning as much and things are paid for and I don't have to take all of my money out all at once. I can shift money into a lower tax bracket in the future. So I'm getting several benefits at once, right? Mm -hmm. Lowering my immediate tax rate, increasing the amount that I'm saving and growing into the future, and I'm pushing into the future in a lower tax rate. Well, and here's something that that business owner might not be thinking about. Here's a couple of things. Uh, one, it might not cost you as much as you think to have employees be part of that plan, right? Mm -hmm. So say you set it up to where they're getting 3% of their pay. It might not cost you as much as you think, number one. Um, you could potentially have it set up to where they're not eligible for mm -hmm. that retirement plan for a certain period of time. So before they even start getting contributions, well, you know, they've got to wait a little bit. So right. that might incentivize that person to also stay there longer and be with the company less yeah. turnover potentially. Sometimes golden handcuffs are a useful thing. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, and, you know, you don't have to have a business full of employees, right? If you have your own business and it's an, a business of one, there's still options out there for you, even if you're the only person in the business. So that's an interesting one because a lot of people don't realize that as the business owner, you get to wear two hats. You're the employer mm -hmm. and the employee. Uh -huh. Right. I think most folks yeah. that work for somebody else, uh, they're used to wearing the employee hat. Right. And so they're sort of presented with the terms as to what they're going to get. Right. You know, here's the types of benefits that we have or don't have. Here's the pay structure that you have. Here's sort of what the assigned work is. And this is how we get it done. And there, there's a structure to that employment. The employer, though, they have to figure out what's what is the right structure. Right. What can the business bear? What does it need? How does it, you know, how is it going to utilize this tool? Uh, oftentimes it's driven by the needs of the business owner, but not exclusively. 
True. Right. And especially the larger the business, the more that it's driven by the the needs of the employees. Right. right. And there's different types of retirement plans out there, too. So one might not be the perfect fit, but then you explore another option. You're like, hey, this one sounds like it really might work for me. There's so many different options anymore. Exactly. And so and we and there's there's so many more nuances to the benefits, too. Right. Uh for the sake of not boring our listeners to death here, yeah. here's here's kind of the key takeaway. Businesses can expense business benefits. And those benefits, because they're being expensed, becomes more tax efficient. And you then have opportunities to work with. This is what a lot of financial planners are working with, and a lot of financial consultants, even insurance folks. What they're trying to do is try to reposition money within the business to be more tax efficient. 